Hi, and welcome again to the CLL and H Model Railroad. Um, today we're going to build a resistance soldering iron. Um, I looked into purchasing one um, here a few months back and I found that they were $600, $500, um, some of them even higher than that. So I knew there was going to be a better solution to that. Still get my resistance soldering iron and have it operational within a few hundred dollars maybe. Well, come to find out, I was able to build one uh, with a little bit of time and some patience for about 75 bucks, all brand new parts. So today what we're gonna do is kind of go over a few things that I did, what I ordered. I'll show you my sketch and my little blueprint or schematic that I built uh, so I can show it to you uh, in, in that manner and, and you will be able to build your own. All the products that I, I used on this was purchased from eBay. So um, they're really cheap, um, easy to get, and they came within about three or four weeks. So let's go over some of this. Um, I'll show you what it looked like all put together and then I'll kind of explain to you how I did it. Okay, so this is my resistance soldering iron. Um, I've got the soldering tip. I've got the ground wire. Basically everything that you would use uh, to have a resistance soldering iron and purchase the big dollar, $600 one. So first we're gonna go over the power supply. Uh, went on to eBay and it's a 12 volt or 24 volt. It goes up the, you know, either one. Um, 30 amp, that's one of the important parts there, is you want enough amperage that you will get enough heat in that desired area to solder that part. Okay. This is the label on the box. Okay, and get a little closer here. You can go on to eBay and you can get this. And that's what this looks like. It's just a little power supply. And it has the terminals here for your power in, which is right here. This is my power in. Okay, very simple. I just cut the back of an extension cord off and then strip the wires. And it's all labeled on the inside here. Tells you where to locate your wires and which wires go where. Then I did my dimmer switch, which, why I did a dimmer switch is I can regulate the amount of power going to sp the specific part. So if I got something that's fairly heavy, I'm going to give it as much juice as I you know, can, can to get that to heat that specific area and solder it. But what happens if I'm doing a railing or something that's very thin? You hit it with a lot of power, you're just going to melt it. So that way I did this little dimmer switch. Okay, very simple operation. There's nothing really to it. It costs 12 bucks, I think. Um, I'll go over this as soon as uh, the prices on all these parts as soon as I'm done explaining which parts I bought. So for the power supply, it goes in to the in, which is labeled. Okay, on the inside. Then out, it's labeled. It's so simple. And what I did is I put some plugs here to separate the parts so if I needed to work on my unit here or do something to it I didn't have to try to unsolder everything to do it so say my power supply goes out this way I just unplug everything and put a new power supply and wire it up and it's done so you don't have to go to this extent you can go ahead and hardwire every, everything if you want but where you're doing your connections I still suggest you buying a little hobby box here that you can you know screw down which this is basically that way it's got screws and I just screw it down and it tightens up I labeled what plug goes where um, if you're hardwired obviously you don't have to do that then I've got my step switch for turning the power on and off so this whole unit will be on the floor and then when I touch my soldering iron to 
whatever I'm soldering and it's grounded with the ground uh, alligator clip, then I hit the power switch, it heats it up in that specific area, and I solder it. And that's what's neat about these resistance solders, soldering systems is that you don't heat the whole entire part. You heat just the specific area you're soldering. Really slick. Okay, so a couple things here. I'll show you, and you can take a snapshot of this if you like. Here's my schematic. Shows the power supply, shows the dimmer, and it shows the connection here uh, if you want to put plugs or not. And black obviously is negative, red would be positive, and then to the soldering iron. Okay. So, in the soldering iron setup, what I did is I cut the original soldering iron, you know, they're fairly long and then they've got a metal tip that's usually screwed onto the inside of it to hold the tip, okay? So what I did is I cut that, slid the bracket that holds the tip in, Two, and then I slid it into this and, and then just reused it. Okay. Now you're wondering probably what this is. This is called a carbon tip. Okay. Welders use these to strip and to weld and, and to do things with uh, in the welding industry. Okay. They're about five bucks. Go to your nearby welding supply, show them this, take a snapshot picture or whatever, and show them that you need this. Basically what this is is a pencil tip, pencil carbon, like you would have on a pencil to write with. It's just much larger. It's got a copper clad on it, which gives me the electricity that I'm looking for to the tip. Okay. So on the back side of this, I soldered my red wire. Okay, so this red wire that goes to my power supply as the positive is soldered to the back side of this. Okay, and then I bored a small hole in the handle itself for my negative wire, which would be my ground. Okay, and that's obviously on here to the same power supply. And then I soldered a alligator clip onto the end of that wire. So when you're going to get ready to solder anything, let me get a piece of brass. Might as well bring the whole locomotive here that we're going to maybe use. So I've got to do some soldering on this. It's an Alco. A couple things that I want to do to it. So what I would do, say if I have to solder a uh, window shade, for instance, okay? I would attach this to the locomotive, like such, okay? Then turn on the power supply and turn on the, the unit to get power to my tip. I would attach the window shade with a little pair of needle nose or a pair of, of uh, uh, you know, tweezers or something to hold it. Hold it in place. Then my f tip would touch that. Okay, My foot would hit this. Boom, it's soldered that fast. And it works really well. I tried this on a couple test pieces. Obviously, you want to do that before you start your soldering onto a $500 or $600 brass locomotive. And just play around with it a little bit. Give it some tests um, on your own. See what voltage works best for you. I highly suggest you getting a dimmer. Um, to adjust some of that amperage and that voltage going to whichever part you're going to be using. Play with it a little bit. You could probably get a little sharpie and mark down the different voltages that work for the specific parts. You know, maybe put 
here's 6 volts or 8 volts and here's 10 volts and so forth. Um, this unit worked really well. Um, like I said, it only cost me 75 bucks. Um, and basically that's, that's the whole unit. So um, if you got any questions, email me and I will do my best to you know, answer those questions. I appreciate your time and uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I, I tend to do little things like this and build things and uh, maybe it's something that you might be interested in or you've been wanting to do for yourself. So maybe I can uh, help you out with those things. Okay, um, I appreciate your time and I will talk to you on the next video. Thanks.